What's up guys, I'm Bizzer aka Bizzer Hacks, and today I'm going to share with you the Twitch live chat featuring Crowfall's creative director J. Todd Coleman and design director Thomas Blair. In this discussion, they go over some of the major systems and performance updates, as well as some Q&A. Let's get into it. Reset. Nice. <laughs> Stop touching things, it's working now. All right. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Thomas Blair, the design director. Hello, J. Todd Coleman, creative director of Crowfall. And this is our February Ace Q&A 2019. That's right, where we take questions from Januarys and we answer them in Februarys. Solving tomorrow's problems today. <laughs> Solving yesterday's problems tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So we'll give them an overview. Yeah, yeah, so here's what we're going to do today. We got a, uh, Actually, we've got a whole bunch of streams coming for you later, which is really cool. That was a great idea. Was that your idea, Val? Of course. All the good ideas are my ideas. That's what I thought. I thought it was. It certainly wasn't Debbie Sue's. No. Mm -hmm. Dodge yeah. She doesn't have Almond Joys on her desk either. <laughs> okay, so we're going to first start with some Q&A from, uh, uh, from the forums, like we do normally. Then we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with First Sanction Campaign and uh, the other stuff going on. And, and in fact, there's something kind of cool in there that we're mixing in as well. So mm -hmm. that'll be neat to talk about. And then we're going to open up to general Q&As. And then after that, it's the Streamathon, the Crowathon 2019. I don't, we don't have a name for it, but it's people streaming. Okay. People streaming. That's what we're just going to call it. People, people streaming 2019. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's start with the first question at the top, and we'll take it from there. Okay. So there's been lots of discussion now that we've got the talent system online. Yep. We've got leveling online. Yep. And we've started to tweak the numbers. Yes, and we need to do some more tweaking. We will keep, like, this is something that we're going to continue tweaking forever. But specifically, what ended up happening was people were using all of our architecture stuff to level off quickly. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Gordon was surprised that people were making it out of the starter area in 30 minutes at max level. Right. Right. And that, that, so we said we're going to let you max in a weekend. We didn't mean, like... In a casual, you know, commercial break while you're watching a TV show on a weekend. Right. It wasn't supposed to be quite that fast. So apparently there was a lot of surprise when we changed those numbers to not be as lucrative. Okay. It's still less than a day. Yep, 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 yep. Which is still half of a weekend. And I, I believe when you originally told me to do this, you're like, don't make it a Blair weekend. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> true. I also said make it more like a Todd weekend than a Blair weekend. Right. And Blair will literally stay up all hours of the evening, mm -hmm. work playing a game all the way through. He can do in a, a, a basically a week's worth of gaming or two weeks worth of gaming right. in a single weekend. So, so it's not even that compressed. Right. Right. So, um, but we're going to see this as we go forward, right? We're going to put in some new items. They're going to give too much sacrifice XP. We'll have to change it. All right. Okay. So there's another thing that's going to happen that's going to change that as well, which is we're moving some of the experience points off of sacrifice. Correct onto game game activities. So when I do things like harvest or craft or hopefully capture and explore, yep. those will actually give me a portion of the experience points that previously was coming from sacrifice. We're gonna spread that out a little bit, right. which I think will give the game a better feeling. Shouldn't actually affect the rate that much if we do it Correct. right. When we won't do it right. So it'll probably affect the rate dramatically and then we'll fix that. Uh, but so that'll help as well. Yeah, the intention isn't to make it faster, just so that it, it's happening as you're doing gameplay activities that yeah. you enjoy. So there were a couple things that I wanted out of Sacrifice, one of which is very counterintuitive because most game designers consider it an anathema, which is um, Sacrifice allowing people to basically twink up their buddies. Yeah. Right? You can log into the game and I can just hand you a bunch of stuff and you can throw it in the Sacrifice Brazier and you can level up. Right. Most games don't do that. Most games, in fact, actually fight if you log in with me and I'm high level, I drag you through the game and I'm twinking you up. Most designers don't like it. I actually love it. Well, I'm twinking, a big fan of twinking. Twinking has always been kind of fun because it's always fun to be well, the you, overpowered You new. feel like you're ripping through the content at a really fast rate. And to me, it also builds a social tie, right? Is What I what really is happening is, is it's almost like a bring a friend code kind right. of thing. Is I'm bringing Blair into the game, and by doing it, I'm beefing him up in level much faster. He's way more likely to get into the game and to stick with the game because of that. So it's from my as a designer stand, that's kind of what I really want, right? So I want people playing the game. So I like that behavior, and so I know it. it, it, it some people think, well, it's unfair or whatever, but I don't really, you know, whatever. I don't care about that, especially when we have a leveling curve that you can do in a week. There was like a war on twinking about 15 years ago. There was. It was, years ago. Yeah, it was a really big thing. So like, all kinds of games started coming up with systems. 
systems where you had to do it, you yeah. had to be there to get the items. Yeah. And the City of Heroes did a really interesting variant of it where they the basically, mentoring. yeah, they, they you could take a sidekick. Right. right? And so the, the thing that was interesting about the sidekick system was it would allow you to come in and join me and it would beef you up so you could go into the higher level areas with me. But it was not permanent. It was only when I was online. So it was still cool. I thought it was a really neat system. Some other games have done it the reverse, where it's you as the high level down level to me. Yeah. And we play at the low level. But of course, the numbers are always off, so you're way more powerful. So you end up just exploding things anyway. So instead, I just, let's just let them twink. Let's just let, let's just yeah. let them do it. Let's Which is why we have the sacrifice system, well, right? Exactly. It also fits the lore. You're sacrificing stuff to the gods. Yeah. And as we go. No, I don't know why Malachi wants so much random crap, right? I mean, that's a little weird. He's like Goodwill, but nonetheless, it does fit the it does fit the lore, which is kind of nice. It also so from a technical standpoint, it has a really nice benefit, which I care about and Blair cares about. You guys probably don't care about that much, but you should, which is that it's draining items out of the game, right? It's actually removing items from the item database, and that reduces the overall number of item bloat, which in the long run really helps with things like server performance and database bloat. So uh, you don't care really about that, but you do care about the results of that, which is performance, which we'll also talk about that a little bit some today too. So um, one other point no, that I wanted to make about leveling that I think is throwing off the way people feel about it right now is leveling is being forced on you repeatedly right now by a couple of things and it's just the nature of where we are in pre-alpha right. right is we are in a state where we're still like we just had a overall rebalance of a bunch of items and as a result we had to wipe everything right for the first time actually last week i think it was we had to have a rollback which i hate but it kind of does happen time to time. And so that also requires you have to go and do some leveling. You have to do right. some rework. So when we actually get out, I really want to have a lot of our campaigns that come up allow players to come in at 15th or 20th or 30th right. level, at which point we're not going to force you to go through that. You come into a game with a high-level character. You don't go through the leveling curve again. You just right out of the gate, we're going to start with you in spring starting to try and, and get out, kill people, get resources, build defenses, capture locations. So it'll kickstart that game. So I think that's the other thing is to keep in mind is right now we're in this weird kind of artificial state where we're constantly restarting and forcing you to restart as well. And that won't be the way the game is. I, I think also some of the testing mechanics that we have in are, are not helping us either. For example, disciplines. Right, right. In the future... Yeah. There's going to be a whole little mini game about getting your discipline. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And some of them will be on vendors, some of them will be on loot drops, so you'll have to get out there in the world. So, right now, the experience is I want to get this character built to what I think I want to play as quickly as possible. Right. And it's not like, oh, I need to go get this stuff and go get this item and go get that. Yeah. You just go into your crafting book and you just craft the thing. Right. And you've just made the templated character that you want to do. So, and I think that's a key point. So, so, so this is where we should draw a distinction between, so grinding basically to me is just having to do the same repetitive task over and over and over and it's not, and it, as a result, it's just not fun, right? If we have disciplines that are like in Shadowbane, the commander rune, right? We mm -hmm. have disciplines that are located in a particular spot and all the players know that going out and trying to fight off the other players so that you can get one of those things, that to me is not fall in the category of grind. That falls in the category of gameplay because right. it's a hot spot of activity. So we have a couple of those we've been working on and you're starting to see them now. The siege is the best example of that. We have <laughs> clearly sieging now causes hot spots. We're going to have to do the same thing with forts, where we cause forts to be hot spots. We need to get that working with quarries, where quarries are hot spots. And yep. the reason that those are technically in but not really working there's a couple of reasons like notifications don't work and when they do fire off they fire too late so right. i can't get there there are too many of those to, to for me to really realistically defend First with the yeah, number yeah. of players on right now there's a handful of reasons and we're going to try and address those kind of knock them out in turn one after the other over the course of the next couple months but i think that eventually we want to get to everything being hot spots of activity and then if we can get the leveling, I really wanted leveling primarily as a training mechanic because we were throwing people into the game with a max level character right out of the gate and they had no idea what they were doing and they would go stumble through a rune gate and Zyback would kill them over and over and over. And I know that sounds like a lot of fun for Zyback, but it isn't really that much fun for everybody no. else. So we do need to have a new player experience. Oh, we lost our video. Oh, that's back. We do need to have a new player experience. That's mostly where I wanted the leveling to be. Uh, unfortunately, you guys are having to go through it repeatedly. Even though it's fast, that makes it feel much more repetitive because you're having to do a lot more than you should. And there's the leveling off of NPCs treats, or teaches you muscle memory, right? So you, 
Gordon and Todd would drop in on a fully mature character and have eight buttons there and have no clue what... Right, of course, yeah, absolutely. Right, like, and there was really combos challenging. buried in there yeah. and you didn't know what the hell was going on. So in the beginning, like the early days, I'm just like, press 444. Four, four, right. right. Just press 444. Four, four. Yeah. And the nice thing about leveling, is, as Todd brought up, is it teaches you things. So you learn what this power does. You're like, oh, it's a whatever, because I have two powers or one power. Yeah, you, it stages the information over time. That's that's really right. what it's about. And you the information over time, a very short period of time, hopefully, but still over time. So it also stages the information to you in the order we think that you should learn it, which I know that there's some that we probably still need to move around, right. but that was the other thing, is we're trying to start simple, like it's your left click attack, and then you're adding additional functionality in layers so that eventually the, that, that whole entire class kind of blossoms in front of you. So you've got, oh, now I understand the totality of the thing. So, right. And, um, and we have players who have been with us since the beginning. We have. And yeah. they have no interest in that. No, that, that is true right? also. Yeah, so, true. And, and unfortunately, a lot of them are the the thought leaders in this space. They're like, we just want to get to the stuff at the end. It, it is. But, but here's the thing is people tend to be myopic, and they only tend to think about their own gameplay experience. Right. And they forget that in an MMO, everyone else's gameplay experience impacts your gameplay experience. So if, for example, we have a terrible new player experience that speeds you right to the end and you think it's great, but it results in 90% of the players not playing the game for two hours, for your experience now, there's no one for you to fight. So as a result, you actually have, by pushing us in one direction, made your own gameplay experience much, much worse. So on some of these things, you're just going to have to kind of trust us. And I know that makes it a little bumpy sometimes, but we need to be thinking about things that aren't necessarily directly impacting your gameplay experience. They're indirectly impacting your gameplay experience. So some of the times we make changes that you're like, I don't really like that because it doesn't benefit me personally. It actually does. It's just obliquely. It, it, it right. indirectly benefits you. So we'll get there. It's just Right. It's just another damn thing. Just another damn thing. Yes. And I think that covers probably a good chunk of this, what's a viable character. Again, it's viable along the way, right? I yeah, mean, so actually, here's an interesting question I'll, I'll bring up for you, Blair, because okay. Gordon was asking me. We went on a, on a trip yesterday, and, and on the plane he was asking me. Uh, with, the, with the setup of the talent trees right now, mm -hmm. Gordon keeps finding himself not able to get his capstone on his promotion. So what is he doing wrong, and how many points should you get? How much of that tree, in your mind, should a person master um, by the time they've, they've maxed out? So at level 30? Yes. And he wasn't able to buy his capstone? No, I don't know what the hell he did, but for some reason he wasn't able to buy his capstone. And I did tell him, my guess is you're doing something wrong, but right. I don't, I'm don't. i not watching him play, so I don't know what right. he's doing wrong. He might be spending all of his points too early. Do you think he's trying to fill out every single thing Correct. in the tree? To get Rather the than going okay. towards the capstone, okay. which may point to other things. Because, again, Gordon's a great test case. Because right, there's a lot of things that we would just be like, nobody would do that. <laughs> nobody would do that. I mean, it's level 25. You need to, to, to unlock that box. And he just needs to spend one point along the entire path to get there. Okay. And he clearly is not doing that. So, okay. So, just to, to make sure that I understand your design criteria, though, you do not expect them to fill out every single no. box up to the X2, up to the point where it um, branches into no. promotions. And if you do that, you may very well be screwing. There are out not of, enough uh, points to take all the way one of those uh, promotion classes, as well as max that okay, entire. So it seems like that might be something we need to message. A lot of these things are that we're finding as we go through the game are things that we just don't message very right. well. Right. I mean, a lot of it comes from like, hey, talent trees have been around for 15 years. Yeah. People kind of generally know how it works, and then it's great when you have someone come in there and they're like. I don't get it. And you're like, what, what? Yeah. And then you have to rethink how it's presented. So usually good things come of that. Sometimes not. We'll see. So. Um, but clearly you should have enough points to buy all the way through to your entire promotion class and one of the sections of that three. Okay. Now, when the disciplines start taking more points... Are we talking about that today? Are we talking about that today? Uh, I think I've the got talent some... trees and the discipline changes that are coming? Will you be doing it? WC says it seems like we're supposed to talk about that today. Well, it's coming out in 5.8.3. Yeah, yeah. So That's why she's nodding her head. She was totally shaking her head at me. No, you're not talking about that. that. So while I was saying, oh, yes, we're talking about that, she was doing this. <laughs> So, okay, yeah. well, let's talk about it. So I think that's a good one to okay. cover. Because so it, it is coming in 583, and it's not a massive reshuffle or anything like no, that. No, it, we basically moved some nodes around where it made sense. And we uh, broke turning disciplines into talents into three phases. Okay. And we are on phase two currently, which is getting rid of the mastery disciplines. So the weapon masteries are gone. We basically... 
But the functionality has been moved. It's not that the functionality The powers that were in there have been, moved. have been moved to other disciplines. Actually, we decided to put them in the disciplines because, again, the promotion classes gave us what the mastery disciplines were. Yeah. Which true. was essentially a way to very specifically flavor your class in a direction. Okay. And, and, and we were kind of doing the same things that we ended up doing in the promotion classes in those masteries. And we're like, why are we replicating this work? Yeah, sure. It's just one more point to get confused on. So all of those disciplines are gone in 583, which yep. we'll be seeing on test probably very soon. Um, and those powers are now in disciplines like adjudicator was weak. So we took one of the MACE specialization talents. All right, so you powers, used it to basically go bolster. back and, and, and thicken up the broth yep. on some of the disciplines. You should roughly get four of... powers from each discipline now. Okay. And that's phase two. Okay. Phase three, you're going to see in the future where we actually turn them into talent nodes. More importantly, we added a new discipline type in 583, which is the exploration discipline. Oh, I'm excited. Tell me more. And tell me why I would take these when all it's going to do is water down my overall character power. Well, you have, uh -huh. no, uh -huh, you have no choice to take them, and it's not going to water down your overall uh -huh. character power Trick because I've question. budgeted it into the talent system. Okay, so, uh, so just to be clear about that, what it means is... These things are just built into the main line that you're yep. going to have to take anyway. They're, we kind of added them as just additional unlocks along the main line track so that you don't now have to make a decision to invest in them because it, that was a decision people were not enjoying effectively, right? Well, and, and if I they, give they you the option like of... They were like, oh, I'm just having to water down my character. Right, if I give you the option of harvesting stuff or exploration stuff uh, or combat power, what are you going to take? Yeah. Combat power, always, yeah. right? So everyone has to take these, basically. So it's budgeted into every one of the classes, and everybody gets two. And you can basically pick between the spread of current exploration disciplines. Okay. That's generally where we've been adding gameplay stuff. And it's stuff like there is a whole slew of harvesting ones, and then there's ones that buff your interaction with the group with harvesting. But in the future, when we do kinds of crazy tracking, you know, yeah, the tracking, the scouting, and bounty hunting, all that, all of that stuff right? will go yeah. into the exploration, so people will have slots for them. Okay, but crafting is still dedicated. Crafting competes with the major disciplines. Okay, so the because uh, we do like dedicated crafters, right? Yes, and phase three, when we actually turn the disciplines into talent nodes, putting a major discipline in there is actually going to unlock a tab that has a little mini talent tree on it. Perfect. So well, those then. those points will compete with your class. So currently. They're actually getting about an extra eight points. For well, the majors. That's, you're talking about the majors. For the majors, majors disciplines only. Okay, but not the explorations. No. Nope. So you just get those. You just get what's on those. If there's ten powers on an exploration discipline. Which there won't be. But there won't yeah. be. You would get all ten. Okay. Right. okay. Generally, so there's one or two. Let's say instead of that, then I have a crafting discipline that yep. I take and I slot it out. What happens there? So the tree for the crafting discipline will be about the same size as the promotion class. Okay. So the crafters will have those 14 points to spend in crafting. And what are you doing with the recipes? The recipes are going into those notes. Okay. So right, I'm asking leading questions. Right. Throw an objective. Because currently, right now, I know you just I get know everything. everything works. So. Yeah, so we've been talking about this, and actually, Todd's been watching these Yes, yes, yes. I actually know the answers. So he know. knows all the answers to these questions. So Okay, so we will have a write-up on this coming. I think you guys are going to... Uh, this, this is another one of those things where we sat down, we looked at where we were, we took a lot of the feedback from the forums, and we decided, you know, all right, this, this, this warrants another pass. So we went through it. We made another pass. We'll do a write-up and get that out to you guys. And it was also one of those uh, development things where we just finished talents early because design delivers, if you remember correctly. I, there's nothing about what you just said that I think is true. It's all true. No, it was. Uh, we had this big system. Actually, we weren't even getting talents. No, it's, that's uh, true. I, that's a good point. Right, we, we did, finished a lot you guys early. Did right, cr crank out the talents. I, I attribute all of it to Halish. <laughs> it was all Halish. Nobody else. Uh, you gave Susie credit for it like a month ago. That's true. And Susie. She's great, too. Right. So, anyways, uh, this is just more addition to it. We want to get the character progression stuff ironed out as soon as possible so we can shift to other things in the game. Cool. And ideally by end of Phase 3, which they'll see in a future update, it'll be great. Cool. So, I blurred right into, by the way, the next question, which was, will you be doing a discipline overhaul soon? And the answer is yes. Yes. Um, will you be doing a rebalance of promotion trees? Uh, the general um, take is that in any given class, one of the trees is viable and the other two are meh. That's always going to be a challenge. Yeah. It, it's always going to be a challenge because a lot of times, uh, and I think Zybrex brought this up too, is when you get new people, they look at them differently. Everyone, as you pointed out earlier, gets very myopic in, in oh, well, I have to take Blackguard or I have to take this one, not realizing how good this promotion class may be with a very specific discipline. Okay. Right, there may be some hidden gems that we planted in there 
hinted to go find, okay. and they just haven't found them yet. Okay, so I would think that, that probably what is likely coming is we've got a handful of things that are still just broken, and we need to get those fixed. Shh. Divine Light being like a preeminent example of that, right? Right. So there are a handful of things that either performance-wise or balance-wise are broken. So the next phase I'd like to see in the 5.8. whatever time frame is us taking a rifle shot to those things and getting those things resolved, because that'll give us a better idea of what our baseline really is. It's really hard to balance when you have something that just doesn't work. Like, it's literally, we've put in the data correctly, but it's not working that way. Well, I mean, we've seen this all through. Because it can throw a, complete, a class completely off. Right. right, or it makes them so overpowered that everybody switches to them. Right. We saw that with, with Templar, we saw it with, with yeah, uh, of course. Champion, and then now yeah. the, the block block is getting stuck on. So you have okay. the power even when you're not blocked. Yeah. Right, so that one's already been fixed. But it currently taints the current testing because everyone's like, well, I'm going to play one of those classes. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you, right? So we react to those as fast as we find them and, and hear about them. Yep. Please continue to tell us about them so we can fix them. And, uh, yeah, it's going to – I mean, that's that's live, right? It's just you're always dealing with class balance and things like that. So we're not finished, and you're never finished with that. Yeah, but we can, we'll, we'll make some good strides here in the next couple of months, I have no doubt. I'm, I'm putting a larger emphasis between now and the next big version, I'm putting a larger emphasis on the quality of life things that are making the current playable game design, both systems balanced, but also you know things like the guards and the forts just having bad line of sight if you build the walls. That clearly is not intended. I want to get a bunch of those quality of life things fixed in short order because we've got a we've got the baseline of the playable game there, but there's enough of those little hard edges that it just doesn't play right. It doesn't right. feel right. So we're going to we're going to take a swing at that. Okay. So um, this one right here, the next question is about the um, the maps, specifically the not necessarily the cluster maps. Though a little bit of that, like where's the location, the free city relative to the siege zone, things like that. But it's more about within those maps, what, how do we lay out the resources? Where are the resources spawned and things like that. So we actually, um, didn't we just have uh, uh, Edson talk about this or is he about to? I saw a note about that. I was on the plane. He has not talked about Wasn't it. Wasn't he going to jump into, I don't know, I thought we were going to do that. Well, let's do that. Let's see if we can get him to, to carve some time out. And, um, and come talk about map generation, because I think that would be really, really helpful. So the nice thing there is it's all procedural now, right? So it literally is an a series of algorithms that we can- You finally have some, your wish. Yeah, we can turn some knobs, we can hit a button, and it'll generate new worlds. Uh, just last week, for example, he passed me a new map and said, hey, look how cool the world looks if I have a bunch more hills and forest. And it did look a lot cooler. So um, we're still playing with that, right? We, we now have the system working, so now we're in this state of turning the knobs. Um, I would love for him to get some feedback directly for you guys in terms of placement of where the R9s and, and how, you know, resources and, and how, right. how are they spread. Uh, I think that'd be great. So let's let's see if we can do a follow-up with him. Um, I could give you answers on this one, but I'm not going to give you as good of answers as the guy who actually works directly on the system. So let's set that as a, as a follow-up. And I think we should have some realistic expectations there, because I've seen things on the forums where you're like, just get rid of everything R4 and below and replace it with R9 and R10. And you're just like, what? Well, so, I, so okay, I do get I do get part of the point, which is that by there are things that we are placing out in the adventuring and siege worlds that by the time people go there are no longer valuable. So therefore, it seems like a waste of space. Totally get that. Um, that said, we you know we need to we probably need to just do a balance pass on the whole thing, right? It's it's different world types. Like once we have different rule sets, they're going to need different things. Right. And right now we don't really do that. It's kind of just all right, hit a button and we need we need to be able to and I think we have templates so we can say, give me a world cluster of this type, give me a world cluster of that type. Right. Um, but we haven't since we don't have other rule sets online yet, we haven't really I think we're just kind of generating everything. Like give me one to ten of everything. And here's the bell curve of how, how likely something is to be. And I think it's also uh, the more you get to the center of the map, the more likely it raises up. Correct. So, um, so I, I think there's some there's some validity to some of those points. Like I don't want to waste a bunch of processing cycles on monsters that literally nobody cares about. But a couple builds ago, I was told we can't find anywhere that has leather. So we put in monsters now that you know that can give you yes. leather. And now it's what with their too low of rank. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. That's the downside of a procedural system is you have to iterate to get to the to the right. Well, it's just like a procedural map. Right? Procedural anything, right? They're just right. generally terrible for gameplay. 
which is why people don't do them very right. Much. So, right. But so. I, I think ours are getting closer and closer and closer, and I'm going to get really excited later when we can bring in things like desert biomes and swamp yeah. and stuff like that. that that's when the system will really blossom. Um, but anyway. That's well, no, I, I think it's already yielding incredible results. Because we no, can just push a button as we It's incredibly said. cool. I mean, it, it really is actually generating unique cluster maps for every campaign. That's really cool. The What we don't have in there right now that I really want, I, yes, we have some issues with, with you know, rank placement and stuff like resource placement. What I really want is more unique things mixed into the map. And right. I think once we get to artifacts, relics, and things like that, disciplines, I think that then you'll have more hotspots and more interest and it'll really add to that exploration game. But as a basis, I think it's working great. Yep. Guys, I just want to let you know we're like halfway through the stream now, so... Halfway marker? Yeah, we're on question number three, Val. We're, we, we're tearing through this stuff. Okay, uh, let's see. There was one about leadership skill. I have no idea, so you'd have to have you'd have to handle. Yeah. That. So we, uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the healing stats. No, I have not. All right. So we we basically had critical hit and critical hit damage. They were all damage stats. Okay. And they were also being applied to the healing. Stats. Oh yeah, no, I didn't know about that. Right. Yeah. So we split it up so that there's now a critical healing chance okay. and a critical healing amount. That way, Halish can balance them. Differently. When is that coming? That's already in. That, was, in. that went in 5.8. Okay. So that, that's where we get questions like this was, well, armor data was all set up before we did that. The, right, the right, right. Look. So when are you going to take advantage of those new stats you created? Yeah, basically when are we going to feed them yeah. in there? And that's just when is sometime in the near future. I can't give a specific, but it's on the list of things to add. Same with uh, like the, the group leadership buff, which gives you a critical hit chance. Okay. It just doesn't give you the critical healing chance as well. And yeah, it'd be great for it to do that, and it's just on the list of things. Okay, another damn thing. What about the the hunger shards? Somebody said, "Hey, your fall and winter shards aren't dropping we weapon additives." I'm gonna look at that. Okay, that, that, that's an that, easy answer. That's probably some bug in the data yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure. Just, just another. I just need to look at. How it. many data tables do we have now? Uh, over several, not several hundred, but the ones that we really use, we probably use like 50 hardcore. Okay. And, and these can have thousands of rows. Correct. Right? The treasure table alone has, I want to say, like 8,000 rows. Wow. It's got a lot of data. And, and in my opinion, our, tre our treasure system right now is light. Like, I, I've been pushing really hard that I want a better treasure system. Well, so when you look at it, 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 it the bulk of it is resources. Yeah. Is the the resources course. get bundled in there, yeah. and we have uh, 10 different ranks of resource, right. so times 10. Yeah. And then of that, for plethora 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we have another times five. Right. So that's how they balloon out. And then you've got all of the types. You've got or, yeah, yeah. all well, the ore types. All the ore, five ores and five stones. And so five just keep stones. adding those multipliers up there. It's very easy to see how, how they get that big that quick. Yeah. So yep. it is yep. what it is. I'm with you. All right. So let's get on to new stuff because we are halfway through on our time. Okay. So first of all, I think we should. Is that okay, mm -hmm. WC? Are you okay with that? So I'm getting okay approval with that? every time now. I'm whether she, good about it. Whether she approves or not, we move on. But I'm getting her <laughs> approval. I want her to feel like she's part of the process. Do you feel like part of the process? I'm feeling more like it now. All right. right. That's great. Really that's good. great. I like that. I like that. It probably would feel better if I didn't call out that I'm actually asking you and then ignoring your answer, right? <laughs> it's a management yes, feedback. Good, yes. good point for me. Good point for me. Okay. So, so let's talk about first sanction campaign. So. Basically, once we got the game up and running with the full campaign rule set, two things occurred to us. Well, well uh, three. I'll start with, first of all, it was kind of awesome that we got to see it up and running, you know, like yeah. actually working as a loop. And the capture bonus, I think, is really cool. That That's actually working That was the first well. big iteration. And that, yeah, that was the first big iteration. I think that was that's pretty cool. cool. So that was really cool. So number two is, as I mentioned earlier, there's just a lot of rough edges, right? There are things that... Were, looked good in the design doc, but in actuality, they just don't work very well. For example, when I take your fort, uh, the notification to tell you that I'm taking the fort happens when I step into the circle. Well, with, as, with the size of worlds we have right now, the number of forts we have right now, and the number of players on right now, by then it's too late. Right. It's like way by too the late. by the time you get the notification, and even if you were to start heading to that fort, I'll, there's so many forts. I'll just go take another one. So and and then on top of that, the guards. If you build the walls up, I mentioned earlier, the walls were blocking line of sight, which means the guards were actually less effective if you built your walls. That's clearly not the intention. So I call all this stuff just rough edges. There's things that we need to fix. We just haven't put a good enough focus. We've been running so hard to get new things in that I need the world building team primarily and also the design team to some degree to go back and just 
spend a little bit more time fixing some of these rough edges to make the thing actually work. Right. That's number one. Number two is, and this has been kind of our Achilles heel since we began the project, right? Which is just overall performance. Client and server performance is not where it needs to be. So it's kind of a chicken and egg situation, right? I say, hey, we need more people in to make this fort defending game work. But if we get more people in, the server can't handle it, and they have a bad experience, so they say, I'm going to come back later when the server's working. And then as a result, we don't have enough people. So it's, you know, the two mm -hmm. things are wrapped around each other. So when we talked about it internally, we said, you guys, I don't, even though we were considering first campaign, just its first sanctioned campaign, a test run for what we want to do eventually with sanctioned campaigns, the problem is the community doesn't isn't going to see it that way, right? At the end of the day, they're going to see it as bragging rights of I won the first campaign. The fact that it was in pre-alpha doesn't really matter. So all of this said, what I'm leading to is it's pretty apparent that we're just not ready. Like we're not actually ready to run a first sanction campaign, and we're not going to be ready until this next major milestone, which has all of our performance fixes in it, is actually gone live. Right. So. To get that thing out is going to take us a little bit more time. Um, so I think the right answer that we came to is let's not run the first sanction campaign right now. However, you guys are actively in and playing, which is awesome because we need that testing feedback. So we talked about what can we come up with in the meantime that will actually be exciting enough to keep people playing and they'll think it's really cool, but not be first sanction campaign. Right. So what we came up with is this idea of the trial of the gods. So we're going to run a series of campaigns between now and that launch. And we don't know necessarily how many because we don't know how long it's going to take for that thing to make its way through testing and actually get done. We know that we've got 12 gods plus all father plus the dragon. So we've got plenty of gods that we can reach into if we need to keep reaching right. into the bag. So, and my goal is to also make these campaigns longer and longer because I want to start stressing that system. So what we're going to do with the trial of the gods is we're actually going to give out a reward to everybody who participates. Now, I don't love participation trophies. I think they generally suck. For the first sanction, we're not going to do that. For right. the first sanction, we're actually going to have a reward structure that has multiple vectors. So it's not just everybody who happens to be in the winning faction gets a reward, because then everybody would join the winning faction. Right. It'll have everybody who's in the winning faction, and the top X players in the winning faction, and the top X of this, regardless of faction. We're going to announce that later. We're going to slice up and show different rewards that will hopefully get us the, the thing that we want, which is people spread out and actually competing, because not everyone can get the reward. For these campaigns, though, for the trials, just as a thank you for helping us test them, we're going to go ahead and do a series of rewards, and those rewards will just be specific to whatever god. So the first one we're going to do is the Trial of Malachi. Yep. And we're going to do it here. I There is a date, but Debbie Sue would know the date. The Trial of Malachi starts 2-12. Okay, our, we, we penciled it in for 2-12. We'll see it always as everything pre-alpha could shift out if we find horrible bugs, which we often do. But uh, the goal is to have the Trial of Malachi, and the reward that we're going to do for this one is our first accessory. So yes. these have kind of been in-ish for a while, right? Like on the equipment screen, they've been there. we actually had slots for the accessories. But I don't think you had any accessories in the game. No, and it's funny because Todd has wanted accessories forever. For the, since the beginning of the game. Since the beginning right. of the game. He, he talked about a whip and a horn that would actually appear on your side. Right. Remember, uh, so, so okay, let's, talk, let's back, back up for just one second and talk about, talk about one of the issues we've got. So one of the things we decided to do with this game was make a large, large variety of character types that you could play. And we do. Like, I mean, there hasn't been a game with this kind of variety of character types for a while, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a traditional WoW thing, so maybe it is not uncommon. Well, they build, uncommon, in, but <clears throat> they build into it. We're, we're coming out the gate with 12. And I will say, of the kick-started crowdfunding projects, None. we are far and cry away. We have more, <clears throat> more character customization. So one of the things we did to make that work, though, is that we made items effectively polymorph to take the shape of whatever character is wearing them. So Correct. if I get a plate helmet and I am a minotaur, it's going to look all beat up and it's got room for my horns, right? If you then take it and you're a centaur, it looks kind of like a legionnaire's, you know, kind of Spartan style helmet. So even though it's the same item, the item looks appropriate for the character. The problem we have with that is if we just wanted to create a single item, like a hunting horn, Right. And originally I wanted to tie these to discipline, right. but we've actually opened it up now. Um, and we still could prereq some on disciplines if we, if we decided we wanted to. But we wanted to have, like, here's a cool-looking hunting horn, and it looks the same for everybody. But 
there's not even a good spot on everybody to attach it, right? If we say, and it goes on your left hip, well, that'll work great for one character, but as soon as you put it on the knight, that's going to totally crash with where they put their sword. So what we came up with it was an attachable system, basically, where we have nodes on every character in a different spot, but that horn can go somewhere on everybody, and it even on the knight may change from one armor type to the next. So it Correct. may be that the horn goes over their left shoulder on the leather, but it goes over here on their right hip, on the back right hip yep. when they're wearing plate. So so we came up with a system that allows us to basically attach these things. I believe we have one large one that can go somewhere like the hunting horn. Remember the three Bs? Yep. Well yes, that's right. One on the back. One on the back. One, one on the belt. belt. And one badge. on the badge. One one that's a, a badge. Is that badge. right? Or baldric if you're the knight. <laughs> there you go. So um, one on the breast, huh? Uh, <laughs> everyone's uh, been throwing crazy names. All right, anyway. We got doodads. I'm like, no. Yeah. So, okay, so anyway, these are accessories, and they're <clears throat> basically like traditional MMO jewelry, right? Like yep. ring and ambulance slot. So they actually do give you benefits. We will eventually also, when we get our skin system online, allow you to have skins that override these, just like we have skins that override everything else. But skins never give you any, they're just cosmetic. Right. They never give you any benefits. They're appearance overload. But these objects are actually going to be in-game objects. And since we're trying this system out for the first time, we decided, hey, this would make a great reward. So every every time we do one of these trial campaigns, we're going to start with a badge that represents that particular god and gives you some benefit that's themed on that god. Right. So the first one we're going to do is actually the trial of Malachi, and the badge that we're going to give is. The trial. Of I'm Malachi. waiting for him to bring it up. <laughs> the trial of Malachi that's, badge. Yeah, there exactly. you go. Exactly. So it's a campaign badge, and it actually um, uh, we're going to have two versions of it, mm -hmm. right? So we have a version of it for the people who were in the faction that won and a version of it for people who are not. However, we kind of made them both good because we didn't want that whole flocking situation. Right. So we just kind of said, all right, well, let's just make them both good. That way the winners do get something slightly different, but it's not particularly better because we don't want to drive everyone to flock to one side or the other. Um, this is just the first one, which is Trial of Malachi. After that, we'll do, I think, Trial of Zelina Zelina. next. And then after that, we'll decide. And there will be Yay. another set of badges for Zelina. That's the old Zelina concept, by the way. The new one's even cooler. Oh, wow. That's still a good concept. This is the teaser. <laughs> this is the teaser, yeah. The, I mean, no, the new one's already out. Greco right. did it in, uh, on a, one of his live streams. It was really cool. Um, so I think this will be really cool. I think it's a fun way to just buy us a little bit of time while our engineering and operations and QA team go off and really pound on the yeah. performance to get performance where it needs to be. Uh, and we are going to do some rifle shot performance fixes as we go through these trials, mostly things that are clearly broken, again, like, like Divine Line. And we're going to fix that kind of stuff. But the major overhaul big ticket items are going to come a little later, so we needed to buy a little time before that. And I just thought it was important that we push First Sanction until after that, because I want First Sanction to be a good experience for people right now. For everyone. Right. It's we still should, bumpy. We should mention that they don't decay. Oh, oh yeah. I was going to talk, talk about that, about but you're just jumping items, all yeah, over. Let's, let's talk about how these items work a little bit because they are items, right? Yeah, so you get an account entitlement, right. so it's yours forever. Yep. You can claim it once, and then that item is no trade, no drop, no sacrifice. Basically, no one can take it from you. It's never going to decay. It lives with you forever. There is one way you can lose it. If you take it into a campaign and then fail to be able to export it, you'd be able to lose it. Now, that won't happen between now and, and launch right. because we're basically putting it on your account as if it was a backer reward. So as you guys know, every now and then we do a wipe and then we refresh all the backer rewards. Right. So you'll be able to get it back. So if you do somehow manage to lose it or a bug catches it or whatever in the meantime, uh, you'll be able to get it back. But once we go live, uh, be careful because it's, it's, it's it, you know once you lose it, you lose it. Uh, it also means because it's one object, you can only use it on one character at a time, right. which is not, if it was a skin, it would not be that way, right? The skin Skins would be more useful, skins go but skins are and skins are kind of cool. But uh, this is not something you can buy, so it's certainly not pay to win, right? It's an object. It's just a we're just campaign. covering all bases. It's a here. campaign reward, right? So, um, so anyway, we thought it would be a nice way to, to kind of drive some engagement um, while we build up to the first sanction. The first yeah. sanction rewards are even cooler, so I, I will say that too. So that's going to be pretty cool. So. Well, let's talk about for the appreciation of those who play four more hours on test. Okay, so we're going to, yeah, we've got another thing we're doing also to drive some engagement on the test server. We're trying to get some of these things. Uh, so that's just another example of another accessory. This is, in fact, the belt That'd slot. That'd be a belt slot. So you could have a belt slot item, right? Correct. So for the people that jump on a test, we're also going to do 
a attachable as well. Mm -hmm. Just because we would like to get some more people on a test as we try to fix performance, um, it's really hard for us to know if we fixed it or not if we don't get enough people to jump we on the test server. We need critical so yeah, so this was this is just a thank you. Like you jump into the test server for X number of hours, and then we'll we'll track that. We'll look at the logs, and we'll say, hey, thank you very much. Some spammer hit me on my phone. And there's two. There's two of those also. One is for February. So the gold tankard is for the people who test the month of February. Okay. But we didn't want to forget everyone who's been helping us since December on 5.8. And so the December, January testers are getting the silver. Cool, yeah, and these can be used on any character. That's the whole point of the kind of node-based mm -hmm. system. Where it goes on your character may change depending on what you're playing and what kind of armor you're wearing, but you'll see it in all cases, which is really pretty neat. These are, these are neat. Um, so yeah, this it's basically just wearable jewelry is another way to look at it. It is, yeah. but it's also, it, it's kind of a cool milestone for us because it means that we can create content like this. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's not so much worrying about can people log in or whatever. It's like, let's go create some content. There, and we actually looked through, and in the art cache, we already had a ton of items that were really cool. It was like, oh, here's a cool hourglass. All right, that's cool. That would be a really cool chronos-themed item. Mm -hmm. You know, here's, 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 we can even scale down, like, here's a, here's a little minotaur skull. It's basically anything we want that we can attach to the character, so. And again, the trials will start with the next campaign, okay. which February comes 12th. on Tuesday the 12th. Yep. Assuming that everything works out fine. That's right. That's my caveat I always but have to throw out. I'll caveat. throw that out less and less as we move towards launch. Okay, um, so I've got a, a news article that will go up this afternoon that talks more about all of this. Cool. And we've got like less than 10 minutes left. So you've got questions. to take some okay. questions. Okay, take a couple questions. Great. So any questions so about this, questions. With the, any questions about this stuff, the trials or the accessories, we could take first if there are any. If there's not, then we can move on to general questions. Okay, so one thing that people were asking is, will these crests stay with the character even once the game is launched? Yes, these are these are entitlements that we're putting onto your account, so you'll get to keep them after launch. Mm -hmm. And we but they won't be refreshed, so don't take one into a campaign and lose it because that'll be it. We did not give a full seven-day notice on the trials. But when it comes to the first sanction campaign, oh yeah, we still will, will give the seven day notice for first sanction. That's true. But these trials, they're they're really test runs. We're going to continue to do test runs. This is just a way for us to drive some more engagement in the test runs and make them a little bit more fun for you guys. Okay, Mr. Monita wants to know: Will these trials encompass the 5.9 update that included the new character controller? No. Well, when we get to that new character controller, that's when we'll do first sanction. I mean, actually, so probably it'll have a little bit of a bleed over. I, I don't like to run a big event first thing right when we put up a new build because there's always problems. So I wouldn't be surprised. I would say the if last trial. We'll probably do the last trial once five nine comes up, and that'll be our good precursor that tells us, okay, here are the things you actually have to get fixed in order to do the first sanction. So but there'll be a little bit of bleed over, but five nine that that character controller and server performance overhaul, that is the version where we'll be comfortable running first sanction. Okay, Tark wants to know if there's going to be any kind of wipe before the trial. I'm not planning one right now, um, though we will have to look at the changes you're making to disciplines and see if that's going to require, uh, and we might have to do a talent tree wipe, but you what get your points back. you would get your points back, you log in and you just repick. Right. Quite frankly, that's effectively a respec. I don't think anybody would be super upset by it. So. Okay, Arcade99 wants to know, can you explain how block bonus works? Does point .25 equal 25%, and is that above and beyond personal damage reduction? Yes. This is a question for you. Yeah, my and it, it is. But I think point .25 is, in fact, 25%. Just it wasn't set up as a stat to multiply times 100 in the display, so they're still seeing it as 0.25. Uh, we started to go through now and fix some of that those display yeah. issues. Of it. Most of them are. This is a brand new So thing. many like attributes and stats, because every one of our characters is basically has, every class has its own like complete yep. different mini game effectively associated with how you play it. And so that means there's a giant blowout of stats and attributes, right? We've, we've got yep. a huge number. And so for the longest time, it'd be like, here's an attribute, and it is 2.789. No percent, no, or a negative two point right. seven eight nine. That was in, was in five eight that we actually got the, the. We finally started to get the formatting in. So so there's still a few that are dangling. And to finish there. answering this question, the bonus is applied to the base 
after the effect. So if you have whatever 0.5 when you're blocking and you have 0.25, it would take you to 0.75 unless you're capped at 0.6 and then it'll stop at 65%. All right. So if you increase the cap, then you can go up to that full amount. Cool. What else we got? Uh, I'm sorry I'm going to mispronounce this name, but name yourself something easier to pronounce. Let me find it again. <laughs> Change your name because Val can't yes, pronounce it. Yes, change your name because... Or just mock her. I'm fine with that answer, too. Okay, Sarovier says, Is there any plan to have a campaign checkout system so people in life have a means to not lose their gear if they fail to bank before the end? Uh, so it, it will depend on the campaign rule set, but generally the answer is no. Like, I mean, okay, so actually, let me, let me rephrase that. So uh, once we get the embargo system up and running, you will be able to go in after the fact and choose the items that you want to take out of the campaign. Right. So you won't just lose them. However, that what I want to be clear is I'm not saying after the campaign I didn't participate, I come in and I get all my items. There is an export system, right? You have to actually participate in the campaign, and that's going to determine how many things you get to pull out of the campaign. So yes to the question you actually asked, but I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear that you don't misinterpret what I'm saying as, hey, we're not really going to do import-export, because we are. Not all campaigns will have it. Some will have free import and free export. Depends but, on the campaign. But some of them will. So. Okay, Evie Love wants to know, are there any changes to the passive skill training trees on the way? For example, the bottom side of the crafting trees still show the recipe notes. A lot less useful now that those are in the disciplines. But those notes still have stats on them. That's why I didn't remove them. Okay. And we are going to look at the as a final sanity check, but I don't anticipate any huge changes. Well, you'll pull the recipes off, I would assume. Already done that. Oh, you did. Okay. We already did that. It, yeah. It's just... It, those nodes feel light now, yeah. but they still give stat bonuses, so okay. the stat bonuses might be enough. Endless Z wants to know, will Pit Fighter be getting a balance pass soon? The class is still unreasonably tanky while doing solid damage. I want a shirt that says unreasonably <laughs> tanky. That'd be I know. awesome. Maybe that's what I can put on your mug, Blair. We constantly <laughs> watch the feedback on the classes. We're not uh, uh, specifically looking at Pit Fighter at this moment, but it keeps bubbling up. So you I mean, probably need to. At some point, I, I'm hoping that a base class change would affect all of the specs, um, because unfortunately, if one of the specs is clearly winning, that's the one everyone plays. Right. And you don't even see the other ones, because everyone's like, well, Pit Fighter's the way to go. Yeah. Right? So we keep on eye on it. Yeah, so I... I, I don't have anything on my I whiteboard. I mentioned this earlier, but what? so internally, what we're doing is we're kind of pushing... The majority of the team onto that character controller performance version that yep. we're doing, but I'm holding design and and maybe a couple of programmers back to look at rifle shot balance issues like this. I want to try and deal with playability, little things that you guys have been waiting on forever. Like, can I have training dummies in my EKs? That's a great example of something that I, that it's not that we can't do it. It's just that it's never managed to bubble to the top of the priority list because there's always other stuff that's more important. I, we've got a, a lot of that stuff now that. I've been saying forever we could do it, we just haven't gotten to it. If I can push the rest of the team forward and hold some people back to take care of that stuff, I think it'd be really cool. So, and balance is definitely included in that. That's right. It's a never-ending game. Right. It's like like always. Is the confessor going to? But be if able we can get you guys, you know, one or two programmers who are dedicated to just because sometimes it's not on design as it's design is waiting for something. Right. right? Sometimes it's. Yeah, the tool for some reason when I enter this number is flipping the negative always to a positive, or I don't have this field and the tool exposed to me, so I can't adjust this. So getting you some programming support specifically to fix those issues, I think dedicated, that that person won't get into it an hour and then get pulled off to work on capture bonus or whatever, right. I think that would actually be helpful. So I, I, we, I think that, you, that what's funny is for me, it is not as impactful as for you guys, is you're actually in all day playing with this stuff. So what seems to us like, a, oh yeah, that's a minor thing. We know we'll get to it. We just haven't had time. For you can have a pretty dramatic impact on the gameplay experience. So I wanna, I wanna clean up some of that stuff now. That's, that's, that's part of my major, you know, next, next month or two kind of things. So I wanna do a big round of, of, you know, quality of life fixes. Sure. Okay, so we've had a few people, and this will be the last question. We've had a few people asking about, asking for an update on the crafting UI change. 
that's been mentioned. Do you have any news on that? We have not moved forward on that. No, we haven't. It just because the current one, while it's uh, while it needs to be streamlined, um, it has not taken priority over new things that we have to right. get in. So yeah, the UI group is constantly under underwater for yeah. lack of better yeah, word. Yeah, they're quality. working on uh, embargo, for example, right now. And so given the choice between have them work on crafting, which is technically functional, it just needs a polish round, or embargo, which is not working at all, and for example, causes that issue where if I miss the right. end of the campaign, I just can't get my stuff, even if I had export tokens. I need them on embargo. So it, everything is a choice. So there you go. Right. But I do want us to get to it, to be clear. Yeah, I mean. It, it is all absolutely still on the list. It's still there. It's just. We don't have the implementation time. Yeah. So stick with us today on, here, I'll call Ben. Hello. Um, stick with us today on the Twitch channel. We've got a full array of streamers that are going to be streaming Crowfall today, answering questions, and we've got other people from the dev team and from the community who will be popping in to share their tips. So it's going to be a great day. I'm really excited to see how this goes. And if everybody likes it, we'll do more of these like streamathons, streamapalooza on the Crowfall Game Twitch channel. And as I mentioned earlier, this afternoon I'll have an article that's going up about the Trials of Malachi and these new uh, accessories. So watch for that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for doing another mm -hmm. great stream. Oh, thank you as always, guys. Uh, thanks for bearing with us in the, the wonkiness at the beginning too. Appreciate it. All right, and I will be in the, in the Twitch channel all day. So thanks. All right. Bye. All right. See you next month. Thank you so much for watching. If you appreciate this recording, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons. See you guys in game.